Falkland Islands Meat Company, or as it's commonly referred to as Vimco, was built in the year 2001. It was originally established to give wool farmers an opportunity to diversify into meat production as well as traditional wool farming. Located just on the outskirts of Stanley, the Sand Bay Abattoir is managed and directed by John Ferguson. I came to Sand Bay about the middle of 2002, so we kind of just getting ready for the first season. I came as logistics officer then and looking after um, all the logistical arrangements, um, buying the livestock and all that side of it, and looking after maintenance as well. And over the next few years, as people kind of changed and developed here, most of us kind of moved along a bit. And, and uh, in 2000, and I think it was 2004, I, I became general manager. For some, the Sand Bay Abattoir might just be an ominous looking building outside of Stanley. But after stepping foot inside, there's a whole feast of operations that takes place here. The Sand Bay Abattoir is an EU accredited export meat plant commissioned and approved for lamb and mutton exports in 2002 and beef in 2008. Since its first year of export production in 2003, FIMCO has seen its customer base expand into seven other countries, the UK, France, Spain, Sweden, Germany, Malta and Chile. In 2005, FIMCO entered the local market, providing a reliable source of quality meat to domestic customers. Another large part of our operation for the domestic market is that we, we also cater for all the, um, the commercial customers. People want to buy bulk pr products, now whether it's the ships, oil industry, there's a whole range of caterers, you know, restaurants, hotels, things like that. And some people just want to buy a case or something because it's a little bit cheaper. Almost 14 years ago, Sand Bay was just a mere figment of our imagination. Previously, folk would have purchased their meat from the local butchery in Stanley, but not quite in the way we recognise it on our grocery shelves today. Years ago, not so many years ago, certainly before Sand Bay started, um, you know, people bought the, 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 the sheep in halves or quarters or full carcasses and they cut it up themselves. Beef were bought generally in quarters. But these days, of course, you can go along like any supermarket and buy the cut that you particularly want that's ready to, ready to cook. So it's instant. People are both busy, housewives, and, and the blokes these days tend to both work. So they don't have time to go through all that. And so basically, the, the whole system has kind of changed and it's probably a bit more modernised, if you like. So it would appear that over the years, the meat industry has dramatically evolved. Following the introduction of artificial insemination amongst farms, Thimco are now able to produce an even higher quality of meat from some of the most prestige bloodlines. That certainly made a difference and over the next few years more and more farmers are obviously um, looking to have the Aberdeen Anguses, the Murray Greys, the Herefords, the beef breeds if you like, and the, and the national beef herd and that the government runs is, is predominantly, in fact I think it's totally um, Aberdeen Angus, so they there's AI goes on and also the lease of the bulls, sale of bulls. The genetics are really important and those are the things that actually help us develop the local market. From the minute the livestock steps foot into Sand Bay to it arriving on our shelves, a highly uniformed production line takes place. So the farm will de deliver yesterday, yesterday afternoon and the, the, the killing today. Um, we kill two days a week in the, in the non-export period, if you like, on Tuesdays and, and Thursdays. So the vet turns up at, at, at 10 o'clock in the morning. They'll inspect the animals. We will then kill them. They'll be chilled then for at least the beef. tend to be um, probably a, a three, to, three to five days before we start cutting into them. If not longer, sometimes we'll, if they're good, we'll hang them for longer than that. They will then be quartered after a few days so they can put them into the smaller chillers. Okay, they're holding refrigerated chillers at about plus one degrees. And then the, the lads in the, um, uh, the, the team in the burning room will then break the beef down, okay, or the sheep. They'll break them down into primal cuts and then they'll stake them. Okay, they, they'll, they'll make all the steaks, the, the chops, the mince, the dice. Um, we saw beef burgers and, and flavoured steaks and a number of other kind of cuts and joints being made and strung up. And they will obviously have to be then packed, okay. 
uh, labelled, weighed, priced, okay, and all ready for the shops. And then they're obviously. In the coming years, Falkland Island's meat company has the potential to sell up to 1,500 carcasses of beef a year. This is an increase of over 900 carcasses, and that is an incredible amount of meat. What we're trying to do obviously now is encourage the best way we can to encourage the farmers to in increase their, their herds because over the years they kind of slowed the, they lowered their herds. Not, everybody, not everybody's into beef fa cattle farming. Um, we're trying to demonstrate to people that it's a good enterprise for them. They're getting good money for their beef now if they provide it in the right age, right weight and right quality. Okay, so we're paying on those obviously factors. I think it's important to also realise that the kind of quality of beef that you're seeing here now, that's, that's as good as beef as taste-wise and quality and, that you'll see anywhere. With this said, Fimco has the real potential to broaden its horizon, bringing you, the consumer, new and exciting products to your plate.